Hello friends in this video tutorial let us understand the concepts of SSAS cube aggregations and the storage settings related to the storage of partitions okay so now for this purpose let us go to the SSDT now we will use the cube that we have developed in our earlier video tutorial in this cube if you go to partitions tab then we had created five partitions two partitions were created for internet sales and three partitions were created for reseller sales now till now we have not created the aggregations okay so if you go over here we can see that there are no aggregations created okay unassigned aggregate design design unassigned aggregation design is written which means right now we have not created aggregations okay so now in order to create aggregations for these partitions right so what we can do is we can right click over here and say design aggregations now at the time of creation of these partitions also we had an option of designing the aggregations along with the creation of partitions or designing the aggregations later on and we had selected the option of creating the aggregations later on and hence right now after creating the partitions we are now creating the aggregations for the for those partitions so we can right click and we can say design aggregations okay so it will start the design aggregations wizard click next now we have clicked on the first one internet sales okay the first and the second one was for retailer sales so now as we clicked over here for the internet sales it is showing two partitions so for which partition do we want to create the aggregations so let us select the first one okay next now let us maximize the screen we can see over here multiple type of aggregations right so these are the cube dimensions okay and these are the attributes within the cube dimensions so we know that aggregations are created based on the attributes of the cube dimensions okay so hence it is showing us on the left hand side it is showing us the cube dimensions and inside it it is showing us the attributes of the cube dimensions now on the right hand side if we see then we have got four options default full none and unrestricted aggregations are pre calculated stored values inside our cubes okay default now to understand this default and full let us go back to our uh, let's say we go to this one right cube structure okay so now if you go come to cube structure then we can see that there are this four measures right now if you go to sales amount and go to its properties then we can see that the aggregate function to be used over here is sum so sum is the default aggregation okay for this particular measure and this particular sum will be calculated against every attribute of this particular cube dimensions okay so and what are the other what does what does this is the meaning of default that is if we select sum if you have selected sum then sum is the default and full means all these aggregations okay now right now for the sales amount sum is selected right so let us go back to our aggregation design wizard right so let us again restart it let us select the first one let us go back to the screen so this means that for if we select default then the default aggregation function that is selected for the measure that will be used against all the attributes of cube dimensions if fully selected then all the possible aggregation functions that are there in ssas will be used for all the attributes of cube dimensions if none is selected then no aggregates will be stored or saved in the cube for the attributes or, or against the attributes for each cube dimension and unrestricted 
uh, is similar to full but it's having some differences with respect to full and we can understand its differences after we go to the next screens okay so let us click the next right now just understand that full and unrestricted are similar okay the differences we will observe in next one or two screens so let's click this uh, next button okay now let us click the count so it is saying us that for internet sales measure there are two partitions okay out of which the in the total count is 58189 whereas in this particular partition there will be around 42984 records okay so this is just giving us the value of how many records are there out of the total records in this particular partition okay so let us click next now this is very important screen now how many aggregation do you want to calculate the more aggregates we calculate and store in the cube the more, more space will be occupied so if we increase the number of aggregates inside the cube which are pre calculated and stored then the size of the cube increases okay whereas if you have more aggregates stored pre calculated and stored inside the cube then your data retrieval becomes very fast that particular part of data retrieval becomes very very fast so there is a trade off if you want faster retrieval store more aggregates pre calculated aggregates inside your cube it increases the speed but at the same time it increases the size so there is a cost involved it increases the size of the cube so there is a trade off so generally what we do is typically what happens is we go with the default aggregates okay so calculate the default aggregates and when we come to this screen what we generally do is we start with the performance gain of around 30% okay so calculate the aggregates till the performance gain is around 30% okay and then what we do is we go for usage based aggregates okay that we'll see in, in one of our future video tutorials then we go for the strategy of going with user base aggregate storage right so now for this particular for the purpose of this particular video tutorial let us say that we start with performance gain of 30% okay now let us click the start button okay so which all aggregates will, will it calculate it will calculate as per the alphabetical order in the cube also in if we go to the cube dimensions they were mentioned as per the alphabetical order and if you open any particular cube dimension then inside the cube dimension also the attributes are all mentioned as per the alphabetical order okay so based on that it is calculating so this means that for 30% of the aggregates okay it's going to yeah so it's going to go ahead with the 21 aggregates it's going to calculate 21 aggregates to reach the optimization level of 30% and 133.7 kb will be the size or the space utilized okay so this is uh, how uh, the graph looks now let us click the next button and we can name it right we can aggregate we can name the aggregate aggregate design for internet internet sales and for partition 1 okay or we can say for this is the first one okay now deploy and process now this means that the aggregate designed will be deployed to our cube and the data for that particular calculations will be retrieved and stored inside the cube if you go with the first option of deploy and process now second save the aggregate but do not process them means save the design of the aggregates inside the cube but do not process the data related to it okay so right now we'll go with the first one and say finish right so now it is asking us to process so let us say run because it will process the full now good to pro it has proceeded right the processing is successful right so close and close right and deployment is successful correct 
So this means now it will start showing us the 21 aggregates which it has shown as an estimate. Now those 21 have aggregates have been saved and the estimated number of rows are this and the partition used is internet sales. Actually the name of the partition is for, for the internet sales there are two partitions. First partition is named as internet sales and the second partition is named as internet sales P1. So this partition has been used. Okay. Similarly, we can go ahead and do this, this is calculate aggregates for the other four partitions that is one in remaining one in internet sales and the three remaining in reseller sales. Right? So, in this video tutorial, we will not be going through calculation of each of these four partitions, but now let us focus or concentrate on another aspect. Right? So, if we come to a partitions tab, now it will start showing us that for aggregate design, okay, it has been done right aggregate design the name of the internet uh, name of the aggregate design that we had given aggregate design underscore internet underscore uh, sales underscore one right and the number of rows also it is showing us right estimated rows right for the first partition so it means looking at this screen also we can understand that out of these five partitions this one partition is now having aggregates uh, designed and saved right so now let us understand one more important thing concept over here which is related to this. So let now we are to, telling that if we have more aggregates then it will have more storage space right. So let us go to the storage settings also to understand some more concepts related to it. So let us go to storage settings. Now which storage settings are we looking at right now it is for internet sales is the name of the partition is the name of the first partition okay. If you are in this particular row and then if we click storage settings then it will show the storage settings for the second partition that is internet sales p1 okay. But right now as we are in this row and we have clicked storage settings so it is showing us the internet sales setting uh, it is showing us the storage settings for the internet sales partition which is the first partition inside internet sales. So now let us understand this storage settings this is the default one that is MOLAP that is multidimensional OLAP. So, what happens is the data is stored in multidimensional format, notifications when the data changes in the base the database right the original OLTP or the base database whenever it changes there is there are no notifications sent to this particular SSAS cube okay or SSS database and processing must be either scheduled or may perform manually. So, we can direct, we can uh, perform this particular calculations or uh, manually or we can schedule it. Now we will see in future video tutorials how to do it. That is how to schedule this calculation automatically or processing automatically or how to perform it manually right. We will see, see it in future video tutorials right. Now let us go to scheduled. So schedule is similar to MOLAB except the fact that the processing happens after every 24 hours. If you go to automatic then the then the server will start listening to the notifications of data but there is no restriction on the latency which means when it will process is decided by the server right. Then medium latency means the duration is fixed for processing. It server will keep listening for the notifications and after every 4 hours it will process. Low, low latency means up it will the server will keep listening for the notifications and it will process the data after every 30 minutes. So, this is very low time period right 30 minutes it is like near to real time right. We, and now if we go one step further then the database storage in SSAS is no longer MOLAB till now it was MOLAB right multidimensional format. But if we go one step further then it is real time HOLAB which means the data the measure group is no the whole data is not stored in multidimensional format it is a mix now. So, let us understand how the measure group data is maintained in relational format ok. So, whatever data is related for the measure group the pure basic data is, is maintained in the relational format whereas the aggregations are stored in the multidimensional format. There is only the aggregates that we have designed only that portion is stored in the multidimensional format ok. Server will keep listening for the data changes and all queries reflect the current state of the data very important meaning whatever changes of the data happens that will be reflected ok. So, if you want this one this option then your uh, servers processing power has to be good and secondly your network has to be good right. And uh, last let us go for the last one that is real time this is ROLAP. So, which means all the data and aggregates are stored in relational format 
it is not stored in multidimensional format and uh, the server will keep, li keep listening for the data changes and most important thing all queries reflect the current state of data which means it is real time OLAP okay all the data changes that happen in OLTP or the base database okay where the transactional database all such changes will keep on getting reflected in our OLAP okay so that that add that to at the real time right so this is the real time OLAP but right now we, let us go with the default option of MOLAP okay so let us click on OK so friends now let us understand the concepts of uh, full and unrestricted so if we have if you go for the option of full aggregates calculation then it is actually restricted by the options that we specify in the next screens that is if we specify performance uh, increase only up to 30 percent then after 30 percent increase has been reached for the performance then no further aggregates will be calculated and saved automatically which means if our uh, particular attribute of cube dimension is lying at, at the end then maybe it will not be taken into consideration right so full aggregates will not be calculated for that particular attribute of the cube dimension but if we had gone for unrestricted then it means that uh, even if our conditions of storage or limits or restrictions of storage have been reached still in an unrestricted manner for that particular attribute of the cube dimension all the that is full uh, that is all the aggregates will be calculated okay and saved which means the restrictions of storage space and, uh, and performance improvements that we specify in the in one of the next screens that do not apply if we have specified the option as unrestricted instead of specifying the option as full okay so i hope friends this video tutorial is useful to you thank you